Hello there people, this is Bruce Pickle or Nintendo Bruce here, and as you can tell, this is a corrupt video. Only slightly though, you know, you haven't missed much. Just the paper scissors and rock, which uh, I'm starting to win lately, which is pretty awesome. But uh, as you can tell, back on Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D's Decade Duels for the Xbox 360, with a little one-on-one -on -one random action. So, uh, this is me trialling out the earlier stages of my Dark Horus deck, actually which will be, uh, what am I talking about? It's up already, actually. Um, but yeah, this is an older video uh, prior to the Dark Horus deck that uh, I've put up. And uh, yeah, it's just me making sure it's gonna work in a nutshell. So, as you can tell, uh, straight up against spellcasters, you can see the spell counters flying all over the place. Uh, Tower of Endymion floating around as well. But that doesn't make for a good time for spell counters. Well, for me, anyway. But, and this is the big thing here, with all those spells, if I can get level 8 out, then that's it, he's basically done. So, uh, me wondering what he's going to do next. Uh, he's going to go for the attack, obviously, on my uh, face down Spirit Reaper. No biggie, no biggie. And, uh, and yeah, he goes straight to the end phase. And although it will be nice to be able to use the Crush Card Virus, this is just straight up, but no, a no-brainer. I have to do the tribute for a Horus level 6. Um, nothing stopping me attack and go for the level 8 in a nutshell. The only thing that worries me at this point in time is the fact that there's uh, Endymion on the field and it's going to get a ton of spell cast uh, spell casters, uh, a ton of spell counters. So with that, he'll be able to tribute, I think it's 7 of them or something like that. Um, to get in, uh, what's it called? The magician with Endymion in his name, anyway. And basically, he'd be able to destroy Horus in uh, one fell swoop. But even if that did happen, I've got Phantom of Chaos in my hand. You know, I could get rid of level 6 uh, when it's in the grey to then attack and do level 8 uh, with the shrink combination of shrink, anyway. But for now, let's see what happens. You know, at, at the moment, we're just thinking, okay, happy thoughts, happy thoughts, nothing's gonna go wrong. And uh, yeah, so he draws, and what is it we go into? So a Krebons, uh, obviously going for the stall here, and lucky for me, I've got Mind Control and Phantom of Chaos in my hand, so, you know, straight off the bat, there's no Endymion by the looks of things in his deck, he's just going straight for the spell counters, um, you know, just to pull off as many effects as possible. That's the assumption anyway that I came to. So, obviously, gonna mind control that Krebons, uh, do a bit of summoning of the good old Phantom of Chaos, and uh, gonna do a bit of a sync. So, I believe I go for Gauze, you know, it's the obvious choice in this uh, format, I'm afraid. Uh, I say I'm afraid because I absolutely despise it when Gauze is used on me, but hey, if you're not gonna use it, then someone else certainly will. So, we've got a 3000 attacker that negates spells. A 28 under attacker, which will eat up monsters. Uh, things are going good. Things are going good. And obviously, there's no harm. Uh, no harm. Man, my words are getting mixed up. There's no danger of gores coming out because of the field spell card. So, in the, on this occasion, I'm more than happy to just attack for the full 3,000 uh, first, and then go for the 28 under. So unless he gets a decent monster effect slash trap card, um, that's this round mine already. Uh, I do set the Book of Moon just in case he's got something to, I don't know, target my Horus level 8 though. And <laughs> you see at this pit, at this point, he plays Foolish Burial, and I'm thinking, does he not know the uh, effect of Horus level 8? So I go straight for the negation. You know, thinking, yeah, awesome, that'll teach you. But, uh, I'm assuming at this point, he's actually showing me his entire hand. So he shows the terraforming, and uh, although, you know, he's showing its game, that he's got, you'll see a ton of spell cards in his hand, you can never be too careful, you know, some people might play on that, as in like, oh, look at me, I can't do nothing. So it's always best to negate this sort of thing anyway, just in case. Um, so yeah, he's down to two cards now. Next one, what's the next card he plays? 
Oh yeah, Heavy Storm. Definitely not gonna that, uh, let that fly, just in case. And we get to his final card now. What could it be? Face up Morphing Jar. Fantastic. So yeah, again, he was like, hands up, I've got nothing. He goes to the attack. Notice I pause at this point. I actually felt like being a, a complete clown and Booker Mooning is more from Jar. <laughs> um, but no, that, that would have just been pointless, absolutely pointless. So yeah, fair play for him just showing his hand and be like, yep, good game on that front. But we still have a second round, so he gets to go first as well. Um, you guys know I love playing first, and yeah, it's things are always a bit meh when you know, you're, you're let to go second. And to be fair, even though the, uh, this deck of his has 46 cards, it seems it's fairly well constructed around spell casters. So, yeah, here we are, his draw. Uh, notice my draw, not exactly amazing. I've drawn both in, uh, into both my Horus level 8s. Um, so that's basically two dead cards straight away. You know, 40% of my hand, if we're going to be a bit mathematical about it. Uh, but yeah, anyway, instant fusion, so cameo on the wizard. Um, he was obviously going to tribute or sync for something. Plays out a psychic commander, and uh, one of the better uh, sync monsters out there if you play spellcasters. Uh, Arcanite Magician. Here we go. For those of you that don't know the effect, yes, its attack is crappy, but it's uh, from getting synchro summoned. It gets uh, two spell counters, bumps it up by a thousand attack each. And he's got the choice of just removing a counter uh, from his Arcanite Magician and blowing up something on the field. So that's going to mean bad news for me. So this hand is a no-brainer here. I've got no nothing that I can do. So Gale, reduce the attack. Uh, and is it I'll go for the attack as well? Yep, it becomes 1200. So, you know, that's it of Arcanite Magician. I just want that out of there, absolutely out of there. No tuner on the field once I'm done with this though. Obviously I've got no spells or traps to back myself up. But again, it's the same play. The absolute same play. So what do we bump into now? Ooh, Defender the Magical Knight. So for those of you that don't know this as well, uh, basically it can remove a spell counter for each uh, spell caster once per turn. Um, to negate it being destroyed. So, if I was to do something like, uh, I don't know, attack him or lightning vortex, as long as he's got the spell counters, he can just save them all basically by getting rid of spell counters. So, I'm thinking here, is it worth playing in a thing? No, it really isn't. My best bet is try and get Gauze out. Um, it helps with the first hand only playing Gale, so he knows that technically I've got no spells or traps. Um, and he's going to do exactly what I would do in this situation. I, I would go for the attack. Um, but, well, good news for me, I do have the balls. Yeah, it's only going to get a 1600 token. But, uh, yeah, you know, 2700 attack on the field. Plus a, a tribute token, I guess you could say, because 1600 isn't going to get me anywhere at this moment in time. Um, and notice that I will be putting it in defense mode, because at the end of the day, if he decides to attack with his other defender, um, and I'm in attack mode, then he would just get rid of a spell counter to, well, Kamikaze for free. So, you know, his defender would still be there, and my uh, counter would have. So, not doing good on the draws on this front. Horus level 4. Um, not much I can do at all. I'm thinking about the summon, but there really isn't a point at all. So, set the Book of Moon, just in case. And, uh, yeah, might as well get rid of one of these spell counters. You know, do a bit of battle damage. Yeah, only 1100, but it's better than nothing. go. So end phase. Now what is it he goes into now? I think he does some more tuning at this point now. Yep, here we go, Psychic Commander. So straight away I'm thinking, Jesus, Arcanite Magician. But wait, I've got Book of Moon, just as well I've said that. 
For those of you guys that don't know, yes it's going to get the counters to destroy things, but that's its priority effect. So, in a nutshell, you know, it can't activate his effect of destroying, uh, well, anything. So, you're chaining to the effect of the spell counters. Yes, please. I'm going to leave you with Cracky Attack and Mediocre Defense. The same play, the same play. So, as long as he's not drawing into any more spells or traps, then that's the end of his turn now, I believe. Oh yeah, goes for the defense. You know, why not, eh? Why not? And uh, finally, draw into something that I can technically use. I'm checking the graveyard here, looking at a lowly gale. Absolutely no point in using my Phantom Chaos effect, so I just decided to set it uh, as Dark Fodder for Dark Arm Dragon, basically. So, might as well get rid of one of those uh, good old counters, is it, I'm thinking? Yeah, I think at this point I was wondering what was it actually any point of, um, you know, attacking Defender, like would it still get the spell counter effect if I went for Arcanite Magician? And of course it does. So, never mind, never mind. At least I'm thinking, Arcanite Magician, no counters, next turn it's dead. You know, gone. So I play Dark World Dealings here, I'm thinking, Bit of an odd one for a uh, spell uh, for a spellcaster deck, I guess you could say. And uh, I think to myself, "Oh, Sangan gets a dark in the grave, but if he destroys my field, then that ruins my dark arm dragon effect." So, Horus level four, in you go. I've got another one spare anyway. Uh, Magical City of Endymion. At this moment, I'm still a bit oblivious to uh, Endymion's effect, even though I've used it before. So, he plays Spell Power Grasp, and there's Spell Counts, I'm thinking, oh, he's going to put that on Arcanite Magician. But no, he doesn't. Puts it on the Tower of Endymion. I'm thinking, oh, this is fantastic, amazing. I've got nothing to worry about. Um, little did I realise I actually did. Uh, forgot that Endymion can substitute its counters for, uh, well, payment of another card, essentially. So down goes scores. there's one Dark Monster, and he goes for the, um, the face down uh, Phantom of Chaos as well. So just as well I didn't let go of Sangan, because I wouldn't have been able to do anything at this moment in time. He ends the phase, you know, fair enough. And uh, I believe here is game. So unless that face down is something which I don't think it was, to be honest with you, I think it's uh, just something that could be destroyed outright. So, play the Heavy Storm anyway, just in case, because I didn't realise at this moment it was uh, going to be game. I was just thinking, right, got to get rid of that Endymion. I don't want any funny business with those counters again. So, um, yeah, here we are coming to the end of the duel now. So, I'm going to say, again, I do apologise for the very, very choppy beginning, but as you saw, you didn't miss much. Uh, if you liked what you uh, saw here today, then give us that good old thumbs up. You know, it lets me know I'm doing the right thing. And uh, by all means, pop comments in the section below. You know I love replying to them. And uh, there's something a bit special that I'm going to pop up. Um, I'm not sure if it's after this video or whatnot. Um, but I'm actually doing a, a live commentary. Uh, or I've done a live commentary. Uh, it's my first one, I hope you guys enjoy it, obviously give us the feedback on that once it pops out, and uh, yeah, I suppose I'm going to have to leave you guys there, so you guys know what's coming, you take care, and I will see you again very, very soon.